We are favored this morning. We have the well noted evangelist, stomp down preacher, <laughs> Dr. Oscar Lane, is with us this morning. We want to recognize him. And if you know me and you know how I, what I feel about Oscar Lane's ministry, you know I've already tipped over to him and said, Preacher, come on down and, and, and do this prayer for us and, uh, and give us some motivational ministry this morning during the prayer season. Amen. Amen. And I'm just crazy enough to have faith that if it's put on the petition and put on the list, God's going to hear us. So at this time, I'm going to invite, let's give him a hearty amen and a hand clap. Amen. Dr. Lane, for those who don't know it, is the evangelist that preached this church out. Amen. Am I right? He, he, it wasn't no church here when he came, but he preached one out. <laughs> God bless you, Dr. Lane. I'm going to ask everyone out of respect prayer to stand on your feet. Listen to me now. There are three things about prayer that most people don't know. Say it again. There are three things about prayer most people don't know. Prayer must be constant. Don't wait until you come on the Sabbath to pray. 24 hours a day you should whisper a prayer because he's looking and booking. Constant prayer changes things. Then prayer must be unselfish. When we pray, we pray mostly for our own family save my mother and my father and bless my children and my grandmother and give me a raise on my job and help me. We don't pray for other people that often. It must be constant. It must be unselfish. And then it must be intact. What you mean intact? Once you ask him for something, don't ask him two and three times. Otherwise, you ask to miss. When you ask him and then thank him from now on, the Lord says she's expecting it, so I got to give it to her because she only asked one time. Yes. He never said beg for nothing. He said ask. Yes. I preached a sermon the other night, prophesying a prophet line. And I told the people how Ahab thought of attractive land, Ramoth Gilead, and he, he knew that he didn't have the necessary allies to go and fight to reclaim Ramoth Gilead, so he sent and got Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, to come go with him. I don't care who you sent after. If you're not right, ain't nothing's right. And I thought about Ahab, king of Israel. Huh? Ramoth Gilead was Syria. Huh? The other day, last week or so, Syria was shooting ammunition missiles at Israel. Isn't it something? Way back there doing Ahab in Syria. And did you not know Syria was shooting at Israel and ended up hitting one of Russia's planes? Shot down one of their own planes and killed about 29 men. Now Russia is upset with Israel because they want to know what, I mean, you shot down your own plane, brother. But you're angry with Israel. But guess what? Russia is an ally of Syria and America is an ally of Israel. So a war can break out any time. So I say it's praying time now. Revelation chapter 7 said, and I saw he has stationed four angels on the four corners of this earth. I'm getting ready to pray. To destroy planet earth. 
Can you imagine what one angel can do to America? Just one can destroy it in a few minutes. But he have stationed four, north, south, east, and west. Revelation 7 saying, I saw another angel not coming down, but ascending, going up. This third angel's message must go up and out. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth, the sea and the tree, saying, hurt not the earth. Because my people are not praying. Don't, don't do it now. Hurt not the earth nor the sea until we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And then he said, I saw the number of them that were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000. You know, Reuben was the oldest, but Reuben messed up. And so the Lord said, Reuben, you got to step back. Why would he start off by saying of the tribe of Judah? Judah was the fourth son. The birthright went to the first son. But when Reuben got into bed with Jacob, there, 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 there are women that's being used up like toilet paper because you're getting into bed with men that don't love you. Don't let nobody use you up like toilet paper. If you're worth living with, you're worth marrying. Ain't no need of praying if you don't know what you're supposed to do. Mm. Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, till we have sealed. And then I'm getting ready to pray now. I was reading in the Bible just yesterday where the Lord said, Though Israel be as the sands of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Mm. Can you imagine Israel being as the sand of the sea? And when the Lord come back, only a remnant going to be saved. That means the devil get all those people. Holy One of Israel. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. The journey before us today is very long. The hills are high. The roads are rough, but we know that thou art a strong tower that this church can lean on in the time of trouble. So will you come now and break the chains and the shackles and allow us to spring forth into a dawn of a new day? Out the door, Satan. You heard me. Out the door. For you're not allowed in the presence of God's people anymore. So it is written. So let it be done. So it is spoken. So let it be recorded. Amen. Let the church say amen.